Hi, everyone. How are you guys doing? Good, awesome. So before I continue, let's see if this works. Oh, not quite. But uh, happy National Croissant Day, guys. That's today. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that, but uh, I had to start with that. Hi, I'm Eston Motamdi. I work for Wrangell as a Director of Architecture and Innovation. Please tweet at me. Uh, I'm trying to use Twitter more. Uh, so I basically uh, help companies in their digital transformation journeys, including front-end technologies and DevOps and cloud migrations and uh, analytics, machine learning, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and today I will be talking to you about Augury Labs. So before I continue, uh, I have to give out a shout out to uh, these guys, especially the first three guys, Andrew, Steven, and Fabio. They really helped out, um, helped me out with this presentation. And uh, all four of them, including Santiago, it, are uh, contributors to Augury Labs. Uh, and so Augury Labs wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. Uh, so thank you guys. Okay. So I am going to talk about how we got to Augury Labs and what it is. I'm going to quickly show you guys how to install it so it's not like the scary thing. I want you guys to all install it uh, on the app you're working on uh, after this presentation. And uh, then I'm going to show you guys you know, how to use it, how it works, uh, and some, future, uh, some hints to the future of uh, Augury Labs. So how do we get here? Uh, so it all started with Augury. Uh, so just a show of hands, how many people have heard of Augury? Okay, cool, cool, few. Uh, how many people have actually used Augury at one point? Nice, okay. And how many people currently actively still use Augury? Okay, even fewer, awesome. <laughs> this is what I expected, and I'll address that in a second. Um, so Augury is a, one of the most used uh, tools for debugging, profiling, and inspecting Angular applications. Um, this is a, a GIF by, uh, get his name, Yuri uh, Strumflorner. Sorry if I got that wrong. Uh, and so it kind of shows Augury in action. Uh, there's a DevTools extension. Uh, th this person is changing the um, the hello world uh, in the app, and it's showing up in the state. And you can actually modify the state right into the DevTools extension to just kidding by, and it shows up in the app. There's also a router tree and uh, ng uh, modules uh, tab as well. Uh, that's not being shown here. So Augury was developed by Wrangle IO and a community of uh, contributors. It started in September 2015, launched in May 2016. There are 36 contributors, over 200,000 uh, installs on Chrome, over 2,500 installs on Firefox. Go check it out. It's augury.angular.io. Uh, so we built this a couple of years ago, and uh, of course, with the help of uh, contributors in the community. And so we asked ourselves, how can we help developers more? And so uh, we took a look at some of the uh, opportunities. Uh, one of the opportunities we found is that uh, Augury has to deal with multiple execution contexts. That's because it's a dev tools extension. So you have uh, you know, background context, you have the page context, you have the debug dev tools context. And so when you're um, sending messaging across each of these contexts, it causes problems. Uh, we, we found that there, there were some issues with serialization. Um, so the architecture that it was based on uh, isn't the best for what we wanted to use it for. Uh, so sometimes you may see some state management and dependency injection visibility uh, bugs uh, because of that, but uh, generally it does work well. The other opportunity we saw was um, an issue with corporate security policy. Um, some companies uh, block extensions, uh, browser extensions that have uh, widespreading permissions. 
Augury is one of them. It uses the all URLs uh, pattern matching uh, permission. So uh, I'm not going to name names, but some companies uh, have blocked Augury and preventing the developers from actually using it. So that's kind of an issue uh, and an opportunity there to kind of improve. <clears throat> and uh, the other thing we found is that uh, Augury is great for uh, learning Angular, you know, getting uh, started, especially if you're new to the framework. Uh, it shows you what's actually happening behind the scenes. Um, but as developers became more experienced with Angular, we found that there was a drop off on usage. Um, and it wasn't as useful for uh, experienced developers. So these are kind of uh, opportunities we found to maybe uh, build something better than Augury. Uh, exec multiple execution contexts, corporate security policy issues, and drop off in usage with experience. And that's why we came up with Augury Labs. Again, we asked ourselves, how can we uh, better serve the community? So what is Augury Labs? It is uh, experimental instrumentation framework used to profile, inspect, and troubleshoot Angular applications. Um, and it has two parts to it. So it's not a dev tools extension or anything like that. It's not a browser extension or anything. Uh, they're NPM packages. Uh, let me show you. So, oh, sorry, the icons aren't working, uh, but whatever. Uh, so there are two NPM ex uh, packages to, to install. The first one is the Augury core, and that's kind of like the framework. And then there is the performance profiler plugin to Augury core. Uh, and the idea is that there will be multiple uh, plugins in the future uh, that you can add into Augury. Uh, so the first one was, as I mentioned, the performance profiler. Uh, one of the reasons we chose that is because we looked at all the um, other, or a lot of the other performance profilers on the market, and we found a lot of them catch non-angular noise. Um, so this means a lot of digging around to kind of find the, the issue you're looking for. Uh, so Augury Labs approaches it in an Angular-centric way. Uh, again, because it's NPM installs, it doesn't have the corporate security policy issue. Um, and it doesn't have the multiple context, um, execution context issue because it actually installs directly into your app. So it's all in the same uh, execution context, which is kind of cool. And so it solves the, the opportunities that we, uh, we found with Augury, right? OK, so I'm going to show you guys how to install it really quick. There are five easy steps. Uh, I swear these are easy steps. Um, and two of them are kind of optional. So uh, yeah, bear with me here. So the first step is, uh, you probably guessed, to install the um, NPM packages, uh, NPM install. There's the core. There's a performance profiler plugin. Easy enough, right? You guys are with me? Cool. OK, and then the next step is to create a, um, a Augury bootstrap uh, in, in a brand new main Augury TS file. Uh, so in this, uh, you just copy and paste this into your uh, new main uh, Augury TS file. Um, so regularly, you know, you would uh, import the core and the platform browser dynamic um, and app module, and you just have to add in the Augury core and the performance profiler, as you see here. I don't know if you can see my mouse. And then you call the Augury bootstrap function here. And uh, this is a function that's exported by Augury core. Uh, and then you're passing in your platform factory, your app module, ng zone service, and then the array of uh, Augury plugins. Right now, there's only the performance profiler plugin. So that's all you're adding. OK, still with me? You just copy and paste this. <laughs> so pretty straightforward. Uh, so the third step. Uh, you got to add a build and serve configurations in your Angular JSON file. Uh, so under build, you have uh, the Augury file replacements. Uh, you're basically replacing main TS with Augury, uh, main Augury TS, the file you just created. Makes sense? Straightforward? 
And then you also have to do a surf configuration, uh, browser target. You got to put in your project name. I kind of messed up on this the first time I was trying to install it and, and was really uh, trying to troubleshoot it. But uh, And then you're, again, calling the build augury that you just uh, created in your configuration. OK, that was step three. You guys still with me? <laughs> cool, cool, thanks. Um, so this step's kind of optional. Uh, you want to create a new script in your uh, package.json. Um, and uh, you could you could either run this um, as npm uh, run start augury, or you could just do the ng serve configuration augury straight up. But you know this kind of makes it easier. Again, optional, recommended though. And then final step, you run it npm run start augury, or as I mentioned before, the um, ng serve configuration augury. Cool. Those were the five steps. See, it was painless, it was easy, doable. Uh, all these steps are on the Augury readme, uh, Augury Labs readme file. Um, it's in GitHub. Please check it out, install it. Uh, let us know if there are any issues and uh, report a, a bug and we'll, uh, we'll look into it for sure. Cool, okay, how do you actually use it? This is where the demo comes in. I'm going to do a live demo with network calls. So wish me luck. <laughs> okay, let's see if this works. Okay. So this is Augury Labs. Okay. So what we did is we ran, uh, where is it? Uh, ng serve configuration Augury. Um, by the way, this is an Angular real world example app. It's in GitHub. Uh, check it out. It's a real-world demo example of an Angular app, which is really cool. If you're trying to demo something really quick, this is uh, really useful. Uh, it actually does network calls. Uh, so if trigger warning, if you see anything uh, said on this, it's, it's a public API. So uh, I, I'm sure it's fine, though. It's usually just like random characters. So uh, we should be good. Um, so we ran this, and you can see that the uh, performance profiler just uh, pops up right away. And you have different uh, sections to this. So first, you have your control panel. That's this area on the right-hand side. Uh, you have your um, pause and uh, record button here. You have your clear button that clears everything. So what it allows you to do, as you can guess, is go to the point in your application where you're seeing some performance issues and uh, start uh, recording, and then do that action, and then pause, and then you can come back into here and kind of inspect it. Um, so then there is the clear, of course. Then you have your timeline overview. This is basically um, the, the recording, the timeline overall recording. And you can click and zoom into any area, fancy. And uh, this, this timeline details view is kind of like a zoomed in version of what you uh, selected. And then you have these event details. Uh, so there are three different types of events. There are tasks, there is instability, and then there's change detection. So tasks um, come from the zone JS. It kind of wraps all the um, events from the JavaScript uh, event queue, and it allows Angular to determine you know, uh, if there are changes and then what to change and stuff like that. Uh, so if you click on it, you'll see there's some details there, which is cool, like the runtime, the zone, et cetera. Uh, so for this one, I believe it was a click uh, that, that triggered all this. And then you have an instability period so what this does, it is actually um, listens to uh, uh, a, uh, the unstable event. And so this period is kind of um, the, the time where uh, Angular is trying to detect stuff and uh, actually change stuff based on what it's detected. Um, and you'll see that there is a component tree here. Let me see if the component tree has changed. So if you go here, okay, 
So first something happened, and then in this uh, instability period, you can see that all these different components were added, right? And so this is kind of like your component tree of your application, and all those green dots are these articles right here the, the from the global feed. Cool. And then you have your change detection run. Uh, so this is uh, the actual change detection. And it's pretty cool because it shows you the instance uh, check counts for each of the different components. So you can see there is a favorite button component. And it's checked all 10 favorite buttons, right? So um, that might be a problem. So let's take a look. Let's try to demo something here. Um, let's try to like this first post here. Let me clear. Cool. OK, so I went ahead and clicked like. And so what you see is this initial event. Nothing's changed in the components tree. And in the change detection, it actually had to go through all 10 favor buttons and uh, all 10 meta uh, article meta components. Uh, there's a preview component consists of a favor button and a meta component. So basically, it goes through everything and, and checks everything, which, which may be a problem. For a light uh, app like this, it's not actually a problem. It doesn't actually add much overhead. But assume that there were thousands of uh, components that it has to check. This is a, and this was an area where you know your app was slow. Uh, you can kind of take a look and be like, oh shoot, you know, it's checking all favorite components when it doesn't really have to. It only has to check that one favorite component that I clicked on. So uh, how do you how do you fix that? Um, change detection strategy on push. Yay! <sighs> cool, cool, cool. Uh, so we're gonna try to do that. We're gonna try to prevent it from checking all 10 favorite components. So to do that, this is really simple, I hope, but anything can go wrong. Wish me luck. Oh my god. OK. Automatically added it there. Kind of cool. OK. Good. Oh, I saved. It popped up again. What's happening? OK. So the global feed. Shows up here. I'm going to clear. OK, now I'm going to click Like again, and we'll see what happens. So I click Like again, and then I'm going to go here and check. And yeah, it only checked the one because of uh, change detection strategy. Oh, hey, cool. <laughs> Yay, tell your friends. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to do one more. Thing. I'm going to try to see if we can get that to not check all the uh, article preview components. Uh, I'm pushing my luck with this demo. We'll see if it works. So uh, this is it's kind of similar. Change detection. Change detection strategy on push. Cool. And then we got to do a few more things, because we, we really want to um, uh, mark for, uh, for a check uh, at the end of this, because if we just leave it as is, it won't actually display the articles. So uh, we're going to add a few more things. Private, um, where am I? Oh, yeah, CD ref. Cool. And then, oh, oh, thank you. Woo, I really appreciate that. Thanks for the support. I'm like sweating up here. <laughs> OK, click Save prematurely. OK, let's go here. And we'll do the this.cd ref mark. Yeah, cool. OK, click Saved again. Let's see if it pops up. Yes, it does. Cool. Okay, we're gonna clear. We're gonna unlike this time. Same same thing. 
And we're going to check. Please, 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 please. Oh, it's not showing up. I wonder why. No. Anyway, you get the point. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that's okay. Anyway, you get the point. And then you troubleshoot from there. Uh, I was pushing my luck anyway. So, oh, actually, let me let me just check one more thing. Maybe here. What is the three different blocks on the overview? Good question. Uh, so there's a network call here. So, okay, let me let me open it up. So this is uh, like the first event, and then it actually makes a network call, so XML HTTP request, and then it does some more stuff. <laughs> so uh, you you think you're just clicking one thing, but it actually shows all the events that it, it spawns off of it. Cool. So I think it may have worked on this last one. I don't know. Let's pretend it worked, but cool. I pushed my luck. It's fine. Let's move on. Thank you guys for your uh, for your patience. Cool. Okay, let's uh, take a look at how it actually works uh, behind the scenes. Uh, I'm just going to go through this really quick. Um, so Angular has these things called probes. Uh, you probably use ng.probe before. Um, there are uh, a bunch of them uh, that are used by uh, the performance profiler. Um, so the component hook uh, probe uh, is for change detection, ng zone is for uh, tasks and uh, unstable zone, uh, root zone is for tasks and um, module methods, uh, logs all the methods, we're not really using it right now, and then ng debug uh, gets the component tree. So there's a, there are a bunch of probes there. And then you have enhancers, uh, basically, enhancers take the raw events from the probes and then add stuff to it and then spits that out. And there are these channels uh, that uh, the uh, Augury Labs plugin, Performance Profiler plugin uses, creates and uses to actually listen in on the, on the channel and the enhancers. Uh, so there's one for tasks, there's one for change detection, there's one for instability, and there's one to measure the augury overhead, the, the drag, right? So you'll see in there, um, let me see. Somewhere here, it kind of shows you augury's impact, right? So it's kind of important for a performance profiler to see how what an impact the actual performance profiler has on it. It does slow it down a bit. And yeah, that's it. And then you have your performance profiler that plugs into all of this. Cool. Okay, so the future of Augury Labs. So there, in the uh, repo, there's currently a uh, UI, uh, sorry, a unit tester plugin. Uh, so the um, the uh, npm package is not published yet, but the code is there, and so it's basically a proof of concept, which allows uh, programmatic access to Augury Core, and it can be used for E2E testing, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of using Augury Labs as an automated testing and reporting tool. Uh, so it publishes Augury UT, um, the object, into the window object and then lets you write unit tests to kind of monitor um, like the change detection cycle um, during the test. And it's to kind of um, use this test through when you're doing regression, especially during your uh, CI build. Um, to see if, like, you know, it still meets performance um, requirements that you've set. There's no UI for this one. It's all access in the console, and and so, uh, yeah, if you're looking for the UI, it's, it doesn't exist. Uh, so this will launch eventually. Uh, we also want to do plugin documentation and guidance. There's a little bit there, not really. Uh, we kind of want to encourage people in the community to uh, create their own plugins. Uh, just because there's a performance profiler doesn't mean that's all it can do. Uh, you can basically do whatever you want, create whatever UI you want eventually with uh, just using the Augury Labs core. Um, 
right now, technically, you could do that within your own Angular application as well when you do the NPM install. I'm not going to get into that right now. But yeah, we, we want to kind of encourage uh, the, the community to really contribute and uh, publish documentation on it. Uh, some other ideas are, uh, you know, official pre-change detection and post-change detection hooks. Uh, maybe an RxJS tool, uh, ng-rx tool, uh, live editing capabilities where you can kind of inject components. Um, and also, we, we really want to hear from you guys. Uh, please submit bugs. Please use it. Tell us if it's buggy and where it is. We want to continue improving it. Uh, but also, uh, submit feature requests. We want to really try to make this as... Um, whatever you want it to be. So we'll really prioritize based on what you guys tell us to do. Um, and again, please uh, feel free to contribute yourselves. Uh, here's some uh, further reading and resources. Um, uh, Augury Labs is under the Wrangle uh, GitHub uh, profile. There's some other articles, check them out. OK, and I'm just going to end and talk a little bit about Wrangle. So at Wrangle, we believe in doing the right thing the right way and then improving it. Um, so we have over 300 uh, initiatives that we've done, over 260 uh, passionate uh, JavaScript experts and other people um, ranging from some of the things I mentioned, analytics, machine learning, et cetera. Um, over five years, our fi five year anniversary was uh, just this past year, which is awesome. And we really want to give back to the community, as you can tell with Augury Labs, but we also do a whole bunch of uh, talks and sponsor uh, conferences and meetups. And uh, we host a bunch of meetups as well, like Angular TO and uh, some other frameworks. I'm not going to say. Um, and uh, we have this awesome program called Bridge. It really tries to bridge the gap between um, you know, marginalized people and, and the technology industry. It's a program made by women for women uh, and non-binary people. Uh, so it's, it's a free program. It has courses in JavaScript and different frameworks and like UX. Uh, it's a really cool program and it's all for free. Um, so Wrangle's pretty awesome. And we're hiring, hey. Uh, if you're a JavaScript developer, Angular or React or whatever, uh, please check out wrangle.io slash careers. We have a whole bunch of other uh, roles available as well. And uh, that's about it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, shoot. Questions. Uh-oh. Don't, don't ask anything complicated. OK. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The idea is good question. We don't want you to add Augury Labs to your production bundle at all. This is only for testing. Um, yeah. And that's why that's one of the reasons why we create a brand new um, bootstrap and, and stuff like that. So yeah, good question. Does Augury Labs have access to like memory consumption if you issue? If I wanted to like find a uh, like a memory leak or something like that. Could I use Aubrey Labs for that? Even yeah. Exist yet? Um, I don't know. I can't really answer that. It, it There isn't really an Angular probe for that, from what I know. So uh, that's what it's based on. Um, theoretically, we could, uh, you know, expand it to, to do more than just listen to the probes. Uh, but yeah, right now, yeah, that's not on the roadmap. But please submit the suggestion. Uh, we'll. We'll uh, look into it. Good question. Yeah. So your five steps, uh, those look very similar to how the, the service worker schematic works. Yeah. Files, totally. Yes, there's nothing preventing it. Uh, please feel free to contribute and <laughs> do it. Uh, the only thing preventing it is it's very new. Um, it's uh, very experimental right now. So yeah, there there shouldn't be anything preventing us from doing it. Um, but yeah, good good question. It's just super new and experimental. So yeah, yeah. Well, 
Yeah, so always recommend change detection strategy on push. <laughs> but um, no, that's a good suggestion. Um, it would be kind of cool to to do that to say like maybe you click on it and you see there are a lot of iterations and maybe has a couple of um, suggestions like if there is a ng4 you know a task by a track by or whatever. So um, yeah, another great suggestion. Um, but yeah, nothing yet. Uh, but to your point, there are kind of common uh, problems and common fixes to them. So yeah, good. Submit it, please. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Any other questions? Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.